looks at it as a return on investment. And so what you all are doing now, we're in our fourth year. And I've been so blessed with Superintendent because I got to start my tenure with Miss Richter in that capacity. So, you know, it, it, it's just amazing. And so, anyway, that's, that's not even part of my notes. That's just a whatever. I'm going to go into it. But I will say this again about Miss Richter. So yesterday was Miss Richter's birthday. And so if you all didn't know that, and I told her that this, she was going to be my icebreaker because our high school does a great job of letting everybody know when the college birthday is. And so they'll send out an email, and I'm on that distribution list. And so I forwarded it to her and said uh, the following. I said, happy birthday. This is perfect timing for tomorrow. You can be my icebreaker. And that I'll announce yesterday was Miss Rick, Rickson's birthday. Let's all wish Miss Rickson a happy birthday. I can hear the crowd erupt in applause now. So. <laughs> so unique about this was Robin's response. And you all have probably worked with Robin enough. And, and, and I, say, I say Robin, but when I say Robin, I want that to encompass each one of you all. So I, I, really feel, I really feel like when I say Robin, you all can put your own name in front of that and the work that's going on is, is, is taking that. So this is Robin's response. Thank you, exclamation point, and then right to business. Can you run the FAFSA completion report for me for my birthday present? For my birthday present, the FAFSA completion report, because I run that. And every once in a while, I'll email it to her without her having to tell me, and I'll say, are you proud of me? Okay. But yesterday, that's what she said. Can you run the FAFSA completion report for me for my birthday present? Today is follow-up day, and I want to see who we all still need to get. Well, that's Robin for you. Always working, always focused, and, and, and dedicated. And again, substitute your own name with Robin. But when I say, when I do all this stuff and I get excited about this position, you all have to be excited about this, that, that position. And this is, not, this is not a position, and I say that in, in genuine concern because I want all of you all to continue that job because I really value and appreciate the work that you all do. So you have to make a name for yourself. And it's not, a, it's, you know, when budgets are tough, and, and budgets are, are still tough, right? There are certain positions that we'll always have. There are certain other positions that can be justified, for, for lack of a better term, to be cut, right? And so people start really looking at things and say, well, we don't really have to do that. Somebody else can do that. But I tell you, this is not a job that I think we all wear a lot of hats. As superintendent, I wear a lot of hats and still take care of a lot of different programs and things. When I was federal programs director, you take care of a lot of different things, especially a lot of different counties. But sometimes we get stretched so thin that we don't do one thing really, really well. And I think in your all's position, it's unique that it really, in my opinion, it really needs to be focused. If we're fortunate, and I, I know we're going to be, to continue this position, I don't, I don't envision this position a lot different than what it is right now. I don't want to layer up this person up with a lot of different responsibilities because there's too much with it right now. That obligation to our students and our families is so strong right now. I, I, you know, I can't add on, well, do this, but I also want you to be a grants coordinator, or I also want you to take care of gift and calendar. That would mesh well with the trial spirit. Right? Yeah, yeah, it probably would. But then we're so we're so stretched and we're so thin. So I know with the the time and effort that Robin puts in, um, that I don't think we could add anything to it. Um, you know, again, I so appreciate this, and this is a quote that I love. The best way to appreciate someone is to imagine your life without them. Again, I've been so blessed. Four years now, I'm in my fourth year as superintendent, of having Ms. Rickson with me. And I know your superintendents feel the same way of having this position because this is unique to Russell County. We have the guidance counselors at our high school. They did a good job when they're sending out the scholarships and, and networking, things like this. But it takes a person to pull everybody together, right? And so you, you gotta you gotta have all that, that that central spoke of the wheel, if you will, that connects all the dots for our families and our, our students and all those things like that. And I'm gonna talk here in just a minute. I'm going to get off the, uh, uh, my train of thought, but when we are focused on that, you know, it's so important that we know our constituents. And, we, and I say that because Russell County is different than Fort Thomas. You know, Fort Thomas School District, they're wealthy. Well, their, their average ACT is, is phenomenal. And they're probably the bulk of their kids are going where? They're going to, they're going to go college. That's not the same for Russell County. And so I want you all to always be mindful and not that we're not, but I really need to make sure that we are. Um, college is not for everyone, right? And I know you all have had those conversations with people. Career training is not for everyone. Not everyone's going to go to technical school. And so we have to really know our constituents. And not that we're not going to point them in the right direction and say, 
you can go to college and this is how we're going to make that happen to you. We need to have that conversation with you. Or we can get you to technical school. But at the end of the day, when Michael Ford decides that he's going to go to work at Dr. Snyder, one of our local industries, then I need to support him and his family in that decision. And that decision and that student is not any less um, than my nephew that's getting ready to hopefully go to UK if, if he ever decides to. I don't even know how angry he is. But anyway, um, and I say that because our community <coughs> values, we, we, as many of you all have probably applied for the Work Ready Skills Initiative Grant. Russell County has, and Robin was in uh, many of those meetings with us with her background in business and marketing and worked on a marketing plan with us. But even if we don't get that grant, and I've got my fingers crossed that we will, uh, we're building a new ACC. But I've said many times over, because we did it right, and we had big community meetings, and we had business and industry, and we really listened and talked to those folks. And I said, we're a better school district, even if we did not get that money, because we've had those conversations with business and industry. And we know what they want, we know what they expect, and we know what, what, what we need to do as, as public school employees, or public schools. So if, if, if Michael Ford wants to go to work at Dr. Snyder, and I've heard Dr. Snyder company reps talk about the employee that they need when they enter that door, then I need to be supporting Michael Ford. And see how that connects that dot? We're, we're supporting a local industry. Um, we're, we're putting a, a, a young man or woman on the, on the path to a career, and that works out for everyone. That's what we want. So college is great, absolutely. Career technical training is great, absolutely. Going to the workforce is great, absolutely, because not everybody does any of those. So if we can get anybody in any one of those paths, we're all better off as, as, a, as a whole society. Um, um, I, I don't have any of them with me today, but I can read, and, I, and when you all heard me speak before, I, I've read a few emails I've received from parents. But I don't think, and, and I know, again, substitute yourself, I don't think that there's been a position, and I'll say this, a position instead of uh, keep mentioning Ms. Ms. Richmond's name, that I've received more feedback from parents and community than I have uh, the CPR has issued. Positive, except for maybe coaches. <laughs> Nobody cares who the teacher is, but who the, who the kids' basketball coach is going to be. Um, maybe coaches, they probably run a, a, a tight second there. But, but why is that? You know, wh why, why is it that I've received more emails, um, phone calls, see me at Kroger, or whatever, and people give me feedback? on the position of a college career readiness counselor. You know, think about that. What, what, what is it so unique to the positions that you all hold that make people recognize and value uh, that position? And I think it's because families recognize the end result. You know, they recognize that public education, we're responsible to get them here, and then you all ha are helping connect those dots and take them that next step. I really think that, and in addition to the money, I think the money <coughs> part is, is, is very important too because the scholarship opportunities and, and all that stuff like that that Ms. Richmond helped to uh, to participate in or, or to, to facilitate. But I, I think it's uh, I think it's phenomenal the amount of feedback, the amount of um, of, of just support that we have from our community for the, the position of college career readiness counselor. I, 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 there's not another position. Um, that I've, I've received that feedback uh, from. And, and I think, you know, I, I'm not always good at that, and I think as, as humans, we're not always good at that, as, as taking the time to tell someone or, or, or tell somebody that how much we appreciate the work they do or the position. But for parents um, and even students to take that time and give me that feedback, that has weighed on my mind a whole, whole lot because I recognize how much they, they value that. Um, as I was talking about or thinking about what I was going to say today, too, and I went over the job descriptions um, that you all were initially hired on, and I've just highlighted some of the words here that I think are so valuable as, as you all move forward. Uh, collaboration, teachers and administrators, school personalized learning, eliminating barriers, so important to eliminate our barriers. Every, every child has to have that, that opportunity. Now, I was having a conversation um, with our interim high school principal last night about a young man that's that's tagged as homeless. Um, we've had a phenomenal amount of students that, that were taking advantage of the dual credit scholarship, and, and Mr. Robin has been at the table in all those discussions. And so we're not we're not able to uh, fund any juniors with that dual credit scholarship in the fund uh, because our, our seniors have taken such advantage of it. But this young man was wanting to take it. He's tagged as homeless, and it's a, it's a 
our situation. So we were looking at funding to get dual credit classes. And I, and I say that, as I mentioned, that eliminate barriers because you all uh, have the opportunity to, to give that kid a light, right? And, and to let them know that there is a path for them. And this is what you can do. Some kids don't even recognize that. And this is exciting time for this government. I think the dual credit scholarship opportunity, we were blessed in Russell County that Governor Bevin chose Russell County to make that announcement about the dual credit scholarship. But to, to think about that, we have so many students, and Robin can probably articulate that number off the top of her head, but I, I think I'm most excited about the number of students that we have at our Area Technology Center that are taking the dual credit classes through uh, KCTTS, specifically the Somerset Community College, because I think a lot of those students probably didn't realize what that dual credit opportunity meant for them, and that they can go on to college. And maybe they won't get an associate's degree, maybe they'll just see the certification, but whatever, it opened up another door for them that we probably would not have had as much conversation with had the funds not been there. And so they know that, they get their foot in the door, they say, hey, we can get, I'm, I'm, I'm getting college credit right now, mom, dad, whoever, and, or, or just to us, because, you know, again, we're, we're mom, dad, and everything to a lot of kids, right, because they don't have that. And so that, that has opened up a lot, of, a lot of doors for a lot of kids. Counsel with students on college career plans, Career uh, awareness, exploration, individual graduation plans, progress <coughs> toward uh, college career readiness plans, achieve individual college career readiness goals, um, align aspirations, I love this, with uh, talent, promote internships, administer student self -assess assessments, collection and analysis of data, and I think that's important as, as we move forward on, on, these, on this edition. And probably the most important one, uh, perform other duties as assigned. You know that's that's always the most important on any job description, you know? and so you can you can take that and and, and do that with whatever. Um, but I, I want to go back to what I said just a minute ago about individualizing and knowing um, our constituents, and I and I think that's so so important because you know every, I, and I think that's a lot about parents. I, in, in, in at the end of the day, we see so many parents that quote don't support their child. But I know at heart of hearts, they still love their child. They do. They may not love them like we do, um, but they want to see them successful. And when we give them that path and we want to talk about breaking that barrier, and we had a lot of conversations like that when we were working on our grants for our Work Ready Skills Initiative about breaking that cycle. And, and, and again, I think you all can give students that light to, to help break that cycle. Um, a term, and you all probably had this conversation, I don't know, but we're switching from CCR now, right, college career ready, to life ready, right? Have you all had that conversation? I know we had, you was just mentioned at Greg the other day. I see some of you all shaking your head. So, you know, life ready, you think about ready. When, you know, if, if I'm ready for a natural disaster or I'm ready for, for whatever, then I'm, I'm innately prepared. I'm, I'm prepared for that. And so life encompasses a lot, right? Life encompasses a lot more than just going to college, than just getting a job, than just to go to that career technical center. So I think as, as, as you all have to be also dynamic in that the conversation that we're having today, and I'm not going to get into politics, but, but likely some facets of education will change in that administration and political parties change. Uh, and again, I'm, not, I'm just just by default. You know, we're, we're, we're in a unique position now in Kentucky. There will be changes as a result of a Republican-controlled uh, um, governor and a Republican-controlled um, House and Senate in, in the state legislature. That's going to be different for Kentucky. That may change some facets of the jobs that we're looking at as far as accountability system goes and all those things like that. And I say that is what, never be stagnant in what you're doing. And always be, always, it's, it's, it pays you to be aware of what's going on in, in na certainly national politics, but also state politics. You, you, you cannot isolate yourself. You cannot sit in that bubble. And it's easy for us to do that. We get in the business of educating kids that we absolutely should be in the business of. But at the same time, we have to be keenly aware of what's going on because what's going on in Frankfurt, what's going on in Washington, D.C., is going to dictate what's going on right here with us and the jobs that we do every day. So I encourage you all to be, to stay in tune on, with all that. And, and again, I, I, said, I said it earlier, it's exciting times in Kentucky. And, and I think the fact of dual credit scholarship, I think that's exciting as to what that's gonna keep 
a lot of kids interest that wasn't before. And then as our accountability system changed and the whole, the whole, the whole uh, facet of what's happening. Also, uh, we get so tied up in the, in the college career readiness and the life ready, I think some of the other involvements uh, maybe get pushed to the side. But as I, as I go to meetings, and, and I don't micromanage positions in, in my role. I, I get involved, and I tell my central office administrators, if I'm having to get involved in your job every day, I probably don't need you in that job, right? I need you to come to me when there's an issue, challenges, I can help you troubleshoot, I can help you problem solve, but if I'm having to micromanage that every uh, every day, you're having to run for me every other day, I probably need to reach for somebody else because I don't have time for that, and you don't have time for that. And I don't say that mean, I just say that in, in truth. And I say that because um, in Ms. Rixon's position, <coughs> Sometimes I'll go to a meeting and she's there at the meeting. And, and not that we, I didn't know she was going to be there. But I say that because of her involvement in a lot of different things. And I think about our meetings at the Lake Cumberland Area Development District and our, and our meeting on the um, uh, work ready skills and, and all those types of things like that. So, and, I, and I'm sure you all do because as Greg has expected you to, <laughs> but don't just keep inside that school bubble, right? And, and branch out to all those partners that you can reach out to because they're great partners of support in our school system. And we have to have them. We, we, I, I tell our community, we can't do it alone. School systems cannot do it alone. And I think if we ever had um, an opportunity to witness that and, and to share in that in local county, it, it, it was strengthened when we worked on our grants because we had just an outpouring of support as we worked on our Work Ready Skills Initiative grants. Um, and, and we had just, you know, folks willing to donate one, one company cash, $100,000. Well, you know, that, that's towards our grants, cash, $100,000. Um, and, and that's phenomenal, you know, those types of partnerships. But I, but I say that in reference like of the Lake Cumberland Area Development District is because when I go to a meeting or Chamber of Commerce meetings, I've showed up at Chamber of Commerce meetings, tried to participate in those things, and then there's Ms. Rixon. Maybe she's speaking that day, maybe she's not. Um, but that networking opportunity exists in so many different uh, capacities. There's different networking opportunities here in Hardin County than there are in Buffalo County as there are in Dare County, et cetera, et cetera. But take advantage of what's important to your community, what's going to work in your community, and what's going to further your job. All the while, um, be self, you know, self-motivated because the more you network, the more you get out there, goes back to what I talked about at the very beginning. Hopefully, preservation for lack of a better term, of that college career readiness position or whatever it's going to be called in your district after that grant is, is, is over or exhausted, and that, that position is still there. Um, just if you all don't care, just by show of hands, how, how many of you all know in your district is there a, a, a plan or a thought or a, a intention to continue your position? Is, is, that, is that most of them? Some of them? Yeah? I wish every one of you were raising your hand up. I, I wish every one of you were raising your hand up. And so... If, if, if you didn't raise your hand up, you know, I encourage you to go, go talk to your superintendent. And, and don't, don't necessarily go in there and sell yourself. No one wants to hear that. But go sell the position, right? Sell what it does for kids, what it does for families, and more importantly, what it does for our communities. Again, we don't know what you all have done because it's just on its fourth year. We really don't. It's kind of like preschool education, right? You don't see that early childhood until on down the road. But you know the intervention makes a difference. Same thing in your all's position. We really don't know that return on investment that we talk about on educational dollars. We don't know that yet. But it's a lot more than education, uh, educational dollars here. It's, it's that whole <coughs> business industry, uh, just that life ready part in, in your all's position. So I encourage you all to go have that conversation um, with your superintendent, with uh, you know other central office administrators and, and, and principals and stuff like that to, to garner, uh, keep, keep that momentum and that support going for your positions. I, I'm telling you, I, I've had, you know, when I have conversations with other superintendents that are, and, and Greg that aren't part of Race to the Top grants, and we talk about things, and I might throw out, you know, we're the CPR counselor, and they don't have that. Or maybe I'll talk to um, um, some of my colleagues to the east that aren't part of Greg, and, and I'll be talking about something, and they say, well, you know, we don't have that position. They're missing out, though. They're missing out as a school district, but more importantly, and I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, but, but they're missing, their kids are missing out, and their families are missing out, and their communities are missing out uh, because of not having someone in that position that you all are in to do that work because it's phenomenal work, it's amazing work, and um, uh, I, I just think the return on that investment 
it's going to be phenomenal. We may not see it next year. We may not see it two years. But, you know, it, it takes that. Uh, and even the work, you know, our elementary school kids uh, know Miss Richardson's face. She's not a stranger to them, and that's in part of the job description, right? You all are supposed to have that facilitation with elementary and middle school. Our middle school parents and kids, they know Miss Richardson because, and, and, I'm, and I'm, again, you can substitute your own name for, for Miss Richardson. I know that you can because all those were expectations of the grant, and if, uh, <coughs> if you weren't doing those things, I know that Greg would be on top of you. Um, but, but, and I know, I, I think that people were uniquely chosen for these positions because sometimes we do a job, right? And I have people that are employed that just do a job. You know, they feel, they feel a spot. But as I've talked with Robin, and and, I, and I've got to know some of you all, and, and we're, we've been so blessed at times, um, and Robin will certainly say this, you know, she's been ill a few times, and, and, and some of you all in this room have stood instead for her and, and filled out, and right, Robin? It's, it's been amazing. And that just gives me a chill bumps because that speaks to the people, the per, you know, the type of people that you all are. So you're not just filling the job. And it's much more than that. And so... Um, I was going somewhere else with that, but now, now I've forgotten. But anyways, the point of that is, is it, it's a unique individual to do that job. And, and when Robin, again, substitute your name, is presenting to middle school parents, um, and I've been in several of those meetings, or talking to elementary school uh, students as she's walking around with the WKU's mascot or something down the hall, you know, you can see it on someone's face if it's a job or if, or if it's a passion and a mission. And Miss Rickson, it's a passion and a mission, and, and our community knows that. I know that, the superintendent, that's important to me. And, and, and you all, if it's not been up to this point, I'll, I'll say this and be blunt, if it's been a job to you up to now, and it's not been a passion and a mission, you're probably not gonna be that person when you're in your district. And there's a, sometimes there's other things that are involved in, in, in local school politics, I know that and I get that. Um, but, but, I, but I'm afraid it's too late for you now, right? If, if, you, if it's not been a passion for you now, and you've just been filling the job, your window may be closed because there may not be time to turn that around. Um, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think that's the case because I, I, I know through um, talking with many of you, and, and I know with um, with Miss Richardson of, of conversations I've had with with her, um, that it's that it's much more than a job um, with you all. That's it, folks. I will say that I, I, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate the work that you do, and um, and thank you. And I'll, I'll say this, too, and I, I know I can say this for Robin. Thanks for supporting us in Russell County. Uh, the networking opportunities that you all have provided us, I know that's made Robin stronger. I know, in turn, anytime you make an employee stronger, you make a school stronger, you make a district stronger. So thank you for that. Appreciate that. And good luck to you. Holler at us any time that you can be of, um, was it five more minutes? No, I want, I want to ask That's good. That's good. Okay. We have five minutes or so if we could open it, but I just wanted to get you, not, you've actually already answered this, so it's not, I'm not asking you for an answer. <coughs> I just like to hear your reply or okay. response to this, because as you, you, you mentioned budgets are all getting tighter. Yes, sir. We have instances of redistricting and maybe the future. It's going to be a hard sell sometimes. It is. Even yes. for CCRC, that's in kind of position. And, but it needs to sell its stuff. Well, yeah, and that's actually what we're going to get into a little bit for the next session. But what we're hearing, and I'm from the old days, what I've heard a couple of times from folks in the Fayette County area and all that is that uh, the executive board should not, the guidance counselor should be doing that. Uh, have you, would, can you just respond to that? Well, I, I will. And this is one thing that I'll counter all that. Our guidance counselors currently don't even get to do one of the main components jobs that they need to be doing right now is what? Counseling. Counseling. Thank you. You all answered that in harmony be because of all these other things that they're doing. And so to say that I'm going to tell uh, Mrs. Emerson and, and, um, and Mrs. Davidson, oh, yeah, by the way, we're no longer going to have the CCR position. I'm going to divide this three-page job description between you two, and yeah, don't don't forget, take care of that 800-plus student body. Well, that, that's absurd, you know, and so that's my counter to that. And, and I'll say this, not that they've not tried to do that, and not that, that, they, that they've not implemented that to some degree through the year. Have, have we done historically what's been done the past four years? Absolutely not. Will we if that position's gone? No, because it takes manpower. At the end of the day, it takes manpower. We have less in our central office right now 
not count the coaches, they're not central office positions, uh, than, than what we've uh, had you know, in the past because of budgets. When I was, uh, I was assistant superintendent when I got hired, I don't have an assistant superintendent since I've been hired. And neither am I going to ask for one because that'd be a political nightmare right now. Um, but I sure will ask for that college career readiness position. And you know, I think public, and also that's how you spend things. You know, you, you've, got to, you've got to look at the positions that are out there and, and, and look at what's, what's um, and just because you've always had a position doesn't mean you need to keep that position and look at what that position's doing and what's that doing for the kid, the district, and you know, make that return on investment, if you will. And sometimes things are stuck with the position for a variety of different reasons. But I think, I, I, I know that argument, um, but that's, that's not a fair argument. That's not a good argument uh, because they can't do what they need to be doing now. And you look at the assessments that we do, and that may get less, but who knows? Because again, with the county building system. But what do our counselors do now? They have another term back, building assessment coordinators. And that's not an end of the year thing, especially for high school. We assess all year long, basically. And you, you look at all the different assessments that we do. So that is, a, I think that's something that we could all easily counter um, and maybe need to have a, a uniform message, uh, the elevator speech, if you will, when we're thrown that assessment. Go ahead. We'll get into that actually after lunch too. So, do you have time for just? Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm thank you, yeah. Chairman. So along the same lines, following up, that's what I keep running into. I started a nonprofit that advocates for this position, state wide, and uh, I keep hearing, well, when we hire these folks, they need to be somebody that wasn't down in the council. And my argument is that before any of us have these jobs, it was very few of us that either had a down council degree or administrative degree yeah. and GED. Yeah. So how do you advocate to get past that hump? Because there is some political pressure from the outside, sure. including my superintendent, that when you write these jobs, since there's not an official certification yet, how do you overcome that hump, that barrier? Well, I think you have to make the case on the case by uh, make the make the argument, if you will, on a case by case basis based upon that that background problem. Uh, I'll use Miss Robin's experience. Um, hers was a business and marketing degree. Well, that's a pretty good slide in uh, to a college career readiness position, I mean, right? It, it really is. But you can make that same argument. Of, I think yours is highly marketable with the with the administrator plus DPP. The coursework that you've had with it being an APIS had you uniquely positioned uh, for the position of, of a college career readiness counselor. So I think that, having said that though, I think there are some certifications that, you know, if you're gonna rank order, you couldn't rank them as high probably if you're just looking at certification, just being honest as you would some, or, you know, just taking off the, you know, someone that has, for example, and some of you all, and I don't mean this negatively, but just speaking bluntly, someone that's had a P5 certification that has never stepped foot in a middle school and high school versus someone that maybe does have a high school guidance counselor certification. Well, I would think that someone that's had that involvement with that mindset, that age group, they may wait there. You know, but, but again, that's a committee, and there's a lot of other environmental, a lot of other factors that come into play when you do that. So in my mind, when, when our district looks at that uh, job description, it's gonna be kind of broad, unless the board says otherwise, much like how Greg did that. I mean, that's gonna be modeled after Greg, is, is what I have in mind to do that. So I think there's some arguments you could make based upon certification, but then I think a lot of it is dealing with the individual. My, my, if any superintendent asked me, I would tell them to keep that, uh, that description, that qualification as broad as possible because you wouldn't want to exclude a great candidate just because they have this certification versus that certification. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do. Because right now we have that latitude because there is no certification for us. We can make right. it work. You know, you can, it's kind of like alternative school. Anybody can teach alternative school. Anybody can teach homebound. Um, uh, because, you know, it's wide open. Um, but I would, that's, a, that's what I would tell your superintendent, um, any superintendent. Keep it as broad as you can so you do not exclude any candidate that might be a viable candidate. And then you, then you're free to pick up with them and get your call. Yeah. But, you know, I say all the time, I'm a business, and we're vocational teachers by trade also. So a lot of these folks, and I, when I introduced to this, I thought all of us were going to pass this. I thought that was because I did care, and I did the inquiry, and I had trees of that information. But as I found out, as we all network together, all of us do, none of us do the same thing in our school. Sure, sure. And it's all changed based on what they've needed us to do in our school. And I still
still be a big part of that, and that gives me access to kids and where they're on the pathway, which was a, a big advantage. But, but I think that's important, what you just said, right? What, what, what Russell County High School needs may not, I'm sorry, where do you are? Right. Yeah, may not be uh, right. Right. What, what Russell County needs. They all kind of know this. <laughs> Yeah. Haven't we? We've all just become. So you have the core. You know, right. this should be done everywhere consistent, and then otherwise it needs to be individualized. That's referenced in, in your site description. So I think that's a that's a, that's a great point. Yeah. You know, another area that the kids go to gets touched in as well, and and it's kind of like an unsung song. <laughs> Is that they have really mastered working with our family youth service center. Mm -hmm. They could make the money go plan. If we can make a case for why maybe this is a better opportunity for kids, they can do it. And they, you know, everybody's excited. They work together and they make it happen for kids. So, and that in itself, um, I think you elevate Christie's, and I think that you help families and schools in a much uh, more creative <coughs> fashion through that. <coughs> And, I, and you make you make a good point when you collaborate, mm -hmm. and you can bring something to the table for someone else. And, you know, it gets a lot more people involved and motivated, right? Mm -hmm. And and, um, and 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 again, you all substitute your own name. Robin has never been one to um, oh look look what I've done. You know, I've never seen that from Robin. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't want that. It would just be just the opposite. And I know you all have those same characteristics. So when when you can when you can step back and say, look what our students have accomplished. Those types of things, it, it means a lot again to the community and the parents and, 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 and to the school officials and the Board of Education and everything else. So, yes. And I know Robin and Mr. Roy are youth service leaders, but they, uh, you know, they collaborate and go on trips together and everything. So, that's important. Yes, sir. You want to add something? Uh, mine was just kind of along the lines of what Jeremy asked you about, and you kind of answered that. I was going to get your opinion. I'm in a position where I'm advocating for the position, but I'm leaving, so not for myself. I, I have to take a new job in Texas. But you value the position. But I'm You've very, seen what it's done. Right. And I'm very passionate and very worried about what's going to happen to it when someone who's not passionate and can't speak up about it. Yeah. Um, but, you, but you kind of answered it. I just want to say, you know, something I told them um, when they asked my opinion is this position is not a certification to me. It's a, it's a personality to me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so it doesn't You're need to be. be yeah. as successful as the personality that you, that you put in that place. Yeah, and I think that that's really important. Um, and so you, you kind of, I wanted to hear your opinion on that because I, I've got to go back and I've got to do a little bit more work on helping them line the scouts for when somebody departs. Because I'm actually in the extension. Oh, wow. And they have someone in line to finish out the year for me, but then they, they have the duty of creating this position to present to our board and present our budget and all of that good stuff. So, you know, I'm thankful that I do have a district that, that supports the position, but I'm, you know, just what you said, I'm here advocating for the position, not necessarily myself, because that's how things are right now, but I also wanted to say thank you um, for coming today, and you know, for all the things that, that you said about this job, uh, I mean, over the past, you know, over this grant and, and this job, I think I can speak for everybody when I say that it's been, um, we've had a lot of hardships in our position, um, we've had good times to celebrate, but we've actually had more tougher times than celebrating. And uh, so it's nice to hear that we are appreciated by, by well, very much. You know, I think that's kind of coming to light in my district when you said, you know, the best way to appreciate someone is to imagine your life without them because they are going to be without yep. maybe the people at least and <coughs> the greatest mechanic. Um, and even though my, you know, Dennis mentioned that my superintendent has attributed our high school distinguished status to my work, No, there's only been two people in our entire district to tell me that to my face, and he's not one. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure Robin appreciates you 
Kevin was speaking about yours and all the things that you had said about her. Um, she was pretty hard on herself. It really has. You, you make a good point, too, about people taking the position. You know, sometimes, and in, in, in defense of superintendents, sometimes we have to find a good a spot for someone. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm telling you, I, I want you all to understand that. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes things just have to happen, and nobody gets to know why but the superintendent. And, and right. I'm sorry, those things just happen. <laughs> but, but this should never be one of those positions that, that somebody is moved there just because we had to find a spot for him or, or her. And so, you know, and, and sometimes those things happen, but that would be, that would be a, a cause of, of concern if this position or, or someone that is, quote, burnt out, we just need to, to find them, you know, something else to do, and they're going to, you know, retire in two years or one year, mm -hmm. and this is their last year. Not that someone that's getting ready to retire doesn't do phenomenal work, but I'm saying that this is Actually. not a position. This is not a position uh, for somebody that's, I'm always, I'm always under the thing when people talk to me about wanting another job because they don't like their current job or they're, or they're burnt out or whatever. I'm always under the under the, the take that you better be, you know, 110% at your current job before you're talking to me about wanting another job. Mm -hmm. You better be the one your principal talks about, uh, you know, your colleagues are going to, you're a teacher leader, you're a, you know, assistant principal that's on its way up, whatever, in your current position, not because we're going to move you because you're so burnt out on the other end. Oh, well, I, I face that in my role, too. So yeah. people heard about it. Can you put a good word in for me? Because right. I hate the job I'm doing now. And I'm like, yeah. definitely not as important as you do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that's and, and you make another personality. Good, you make another good point, too. You know, we, I think the public and, and myself, Robin probably, and I know sometimes, I'm sure you're proud a little bit, but, you know, she isolates me from all that, quote, grunt work and the, and the hardships that, that goes behind the scenes, right? We see the good stuff. We see the kids get their scholarships. We see the, the kids networking with this potential employer to go to work and, and all those things like that. But, but you, you make a good point. But again, I think you all have been such a strong support for one another in your networking and you all are shaking your heads now in that, that, that unique to other positions that probably don't have that source of, of support. And that's one thing that I was going to talk with, with Greg about is when, when you know, the, the race to retire, and I think that's some of y'all's continuation, but, but there needs to be either independently or just districts collaborating that together but all the districts that get to sustain this on their own accord, there still there still has to be an opportunity for these folks to do that. Either they make it work, or because Greg helps coordinate those types of opportunities, or because we're hosting regional meetings in Russell County, and we can do that, Robin. Uh, whatever. But that networking has to remain. That that sense of distribution, email, listserv type of thing, all that. And I'll, I'll encourage you all to do that. So if you all get to remain in these positions. Um, and, 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 you know, the great component is gone, keep that networking up because they're stronger together, right, B versus um, uh, separating and, and all those things like that. And that's probably some stuff that you all will be talking about today as, as I look at the agenda. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Ford, so much. Bob, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.